Here now is Lisa Bell and Candace Campos with Florida Foodie. Sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. Welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm Lisa Bell, and today we are coming to you from Akoe. I love it's on location today, and I'm Candace Campos. Now, today we are joined by a chef who took his grandmother's recipe and wanted to sell it, but you know what he did? He sold it out of the truck of his car, but now well, he's been moving up, Now, even now having his own food truck. That's right, we are so happy to be joined today by Daniel Mercedes Jr. with the Dancing Empanada. Hello, how we doing? Thank Good. you so much for joining oh, us. Of course, I like thank the you name. for having us. Yes. It's Dancing Empanada. <laughs> <laughs> but this is grandma's recipe, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how did it come about that you started making empanadas? Um, it was about eight years ago. I was looking for a little side hustle to do and I uh, just remembered grandma making the empanadas so that's what I decided to do so we talked about it and she gave me the recipes and okay. I started making the empanadas and going to barber shops and mechanic shops out of the car and uh, just to see how we grew and they loved it um, I stuck with it and was this in Central Florida eight yes years ago? Central Florida okay. Orlando area Oak Ridge area mm -hmm. that's where we was at and when you were doing it with your grandmother, did you have a special role, like in the kitchen? Were you the one, you know, with the fork? Yeah, the fork. I start. I think everyone starts with the forking. Yes. Um, and then once you get into the cooking and have the recipe, you know, um, you know what you're doing with the recipe. Then you go go and as the cooking, you know. Uh, but yeah, I started as a forker. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you put an empanada together? To walk us through the process that Grandma taught you. What okay. is an empanada to start yes. off? All right, empanada is a flour. We use a flour. There's some countries that use corn, but we use flour. So what we would do is um, obviously cook the meat first. So uh, we cook maybe 100 pounds of beef, 100 pounds of uh, chicken, throw the seasoning in it. And then once we do the uh, cooking, we take it to the workstation area. And the machine, what you would do is you put the disc onto the machine, put your meat in it and your cheese, and then just crush the machine and it, and it crushes it and makes the empanada. Okay, and it wasn't always machine made though. No. When you started eight years ago. It was forks. Was all by hand. All by hand, yeah. yeah, doing it by the fork. So when we didn't have the machine, you would do the process, have a water bowl, wet the, uh, the disc itself, and then go ahead and put the whatever ingredient you're gonna put in it and close it up and then you actually do the forking. The and way that grandma taught you. The way grandma taught me, <laughs> yeah. yes. I mean, and this is a family business. You yes. and your wife, you said that you were, you mm -hmm. started this first, then mm -hmm. you met your wife and she's the one that really kind of she ran with the vision. Yeah. yeah she ran with the vision I needed her in my <laughs> life to, to get to where we're at today so what were you doing prior to making empanadas and what was the final thing that said you know what this is what I'm gonna do I was working at a TTH it's uh, the transition home it's a uh, for part of the like the Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. um, a tr transition home. I was there working there for about a year and a half, and um, my shift was like five in the morning to about three in the afternoon. And I was just that's when I got to the point where I was looking for a side you know, hustle. Like, no more yeah, of this. no more yeah. of this. Waking up early, yeah. wanted to do something for myself. So as I was working there, that's when I started doing it on weekends mm -hmm. out of the car. Um, then once I got to the place where I was making with same as my check, that's when I decided to give my two weeks notice and I ran with that. Were you surprised at how lucrative this was? I was, I was yeah. very surprised to see that if you put in the work, you know, and the product is good that you can make money off of it. So I was surprised and excited at the same time that I was able to leave my job and work for myself. And what, what's, the, what's the hardest thing about kind of running a food truck? Cause it seems so self-contained, but Oh yeah, it, it's, well, the, a right. it, it's the hardest part I say is what my wife does, which is making the empanadas and also getting us jobs, contracts. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part. Being in here is the easiest part, you mm -hmm. know. Um, driving the food truck is the easiest part. Working it is easy because we only have empanadas, so it's not like we're in the food truck prepping anything or anything like that. Everything's already prepped. So to me, the hardest part is my wife's part, which is getting us jobs and getting us clients Being and things able like to that. Set up shops. So Correct. Yes, because you can't just roll up as much as you would like to some yes. of these farmers markets and things like that. That's uh -huh. right. You have to be invited and accepted. That's right. But going back to what we were saying, this this really turned out to be very lucrative for you within a year you were able to quit your job yes. within four years you went from selling out of the back of your car 
to buying a food truck. To buying a food truck. And you also made a goal for yourself at that time. Yes. Tell us about that. The goal was to go ahead and work the business four years and um, go ahead and buy property in North Carolina and be able to go ahead and actually retire. That's what me and the wife are planning. So retirement was the plan in four years. So it's four years later. Four years later and we're here. Are you okay. taking a dancing empanada to North Carolina? <laughs> we're not, we're actually selling the business with the recipe, uh, the empanada machine, everything that comes with the business, the name, the brand. And Abuela's recipe. And the recipe, that's right. <laughs> wow. And what is astonishing to us though, is you said you had that goal for four years, you were able to Quit your job and you've been able to purchase property with some tiny homes so you're going to be starting a whole new business because of dancing because empanadas. of dancing empanada yes yeah. and i'm very grateful for it it's a great business to have it's just our journey's over with it and so when you started out i imagine you just had one or two flavors um yes we had we started with the beef and the chicken well but you also had rice and beans we and have the rice like and bean as well so we started with a few and then as we started progressing we started adding them to the menu and now we have 14 different kinds 14 different flavors. 14 different yeah. flavors. That yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. And what's cool because you said that your wife at home gets everything going, you freeze it. What's the process from making it to now selling it? Well, we have freezers at the uh, warehouse, so we have the freezers to keep them at. Okay. Then like before um, a job, we'll go ahead and take out as many. Like this job, I knew how many I was gonna need, so okay. I would just take them out mm -hmm. and then uh, put them in the, in the refrigerator and then they'll be ready to go. How many empanadas are you selling on a monthly basis? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> on a monthly basis? On a monthly well, basis, fine. maybe Daily, about 5,000. 5,000 5, a month. Yeah. That is a lot. Yeah. And so Probably like, more than 5,000. And does your wife make them all herself or she has to have help? Um, yeah, we have help. Like for big jobs, we'll have help. Um, right now, since we're at the selling process, we're not mm -hmm. working as much as we used to. So right now it's just me and her doing it. Mm -hmm. wow. I do the cooking, she does the making of the empanadas. So when you come up to the window, the empanadas are still cold. You're, you're the one that you're kind of- I'm frying them right there. So they're freshly made. Oh. Yes, freshly made. So it's a crunchy on the outside, gooey on the inside. Oh yes. All right, what are you serving up today? Um, we have our chicken, we have the beef, we have cheese, we have our taco one, which is our favorite. Mine and my wife's favorite. Why um, is that one your favorite? Yeah. It's just the <laughs> mix that it has. It's uh, um, um, beef, ground beef with uh, taco seasoning, cheddar cheese, and then we put a splash of refried beans in it to make it the taco. Okay. So that one is my favorite. Um, then we're, we're serving everything but pork here today. And then apple pie, we discontinued. Okay, okay. so tell me about this dessert, because there's a yes. guava and cheese. There's a guava butter. and cheese, and we also yes. have the churro cheesecake, which uh -huh. is my favorite. So okay. it's a cheesecake in the empanada, and then we just dip it in a cinnamon sugar. And how does the Ooh. family feel about some of these non-traditional, you know, recipes? They love it. Yeah. They love it. It's different. You know, it makes us uh, the dancing empanada. You know, there's uh, a lot of empanada trucks out there, but that's what makes us different is that we have our own little twist to it. You know? uh, what do your kids, what do your kids think of, of oh, mom they and love dad it. owning yeah. They empanada. love it. They love it in the beginning. They worked with us and went to farmer's markets and stuff. And um, for summer vacation, they came, it took them each one of them a day and uh, they helped us here. So they made some extra money in the summer. That's always so, nice. Yeah, they yeah. love it. They yeah. love it. They were, they were kind of sad that we're selling, but they understood now what's the next journey and they're, they're just happy for us with that. I mean, this has been your heart and soul for eight years and yeah. now you're moving on to that next chapter. Are you surprised that you were able to meet your goal of, you know, selling enough to buy property in North Carolina? I'm not surprised because um, my dad always taught me when you work hard and you're persistent at something, it, it works yeah. out. So here I am four years later and me and the wife are where we need to be. And when you have a great product. That's right. Product is everything. Okay. So what should everything. Candace and I try today? Yeah. Um, I would do the taco. The and taco. then, of course, okay. the guava and cheese, because yeah, I know you've been too. talking about that one. <laughs> Isn't that obvious? <laughs> I love a good guava and cheese. Yeah, and the taco, I would recommend the taco if you like refried beans. If not, um, the barbecue chicken mac and cheese is a, is a good seller as well. And then the Philly cheesesteak if you want a steak. All right. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say. I, I, have, I have to make decisions. So it's tough. Yeah. While I make the decision, we are actually going to be taking a quick break right. so that way we can make our decision. And yeah. And, and when we come yeah. back, we're going to be sampling some dancing empanadas. So stay with oh us. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Hey, 
Welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm Lisa Bell. And I'm Candace Campos. We had a commercial break to decide what we wanted, and I still don't, I can't, I can't decide. So I'm just going to let Chef do it. That's right. We are inside the Dancing Empanada food truck. We're here in Nicoe today on location. So exciting. Uh, I love being inside a food truck. I feel like you and I can serve some customers <laughs> right now. Yeah, I think we're going to do that later during <laughs> the event. We are no expert. The expert here is Daniel Mercedes Jr. Uh, this smells amazing. You came in Side, you have fried up an empanada. This is what it starts out as. Yeah, this is what it looks yes. like. This right? is what it looks like uh, when you have it frozen. Okay. About a dozen. We put them in our packs here. And you said this is a flour shell, which yeah. is uh, you can have corn or you can have flour. Correct. And we okay. do the flour. Okay. Uh, Why so, do you prefer the flour? Um, it's just the Puerto Rican way to do it. Okay. More like Argentinian and other countries do the corn. Okay. So we do. We just stuck with the recipe and do the flour. And yeah. back in the day, eight years ago, when you were using grandma's recipe, you made it all by hand. Yes. Now you've, you've grown so much, you're using a machine, but you say it's better with the machine. It, these are yes. thick. Yeah. It's better because yeah. of that. I don't know if you've had an empanada from anywhere else, but it's like more air than meat, and it's because of the forking. Okay. But with the machine, it makes you, it allows you to put a lot more meat in it. So I fried up here a chicken and a beef here. Yeah, so tell us what that process is like. It's like a round piece of dough. Um, yep, it's a round piece of dough. You put it on the machine. The machine's about this big. Uh -huh. put it on the machine and then you put your meat in it your cheese and then you just it has like a little clamp you clamp oh, yeah. it and it closes it down and throws it down and that's your wife's job she is cranking that's these it. out 60,000 of these a year approximately uh, so yes. you were saying this is grandma's recipe mm -hmm. I mean was she able to to live long enough to be able to see she was dream? she was yeah. she was very happy very excited to see how far we have taken it mm -hmm. um, she passed away in March may she rest in peace but yeah. she was very very proud of what we accomplished and did she have a favorite empanada? Um, she liked beef and chicken. When I went to okay. go see her, I would take her a half a dozen of beef and a half a dozen of chicken for her and she, grandpa. Would she critique them? Oh, yes. she said they were better than her. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> that in itself is, yes. is, a, is a big, is a yes. big thing Yes, so that was a, a big compliment. Okay. Yes. And you have three fryers here. Is that simply for volume, or are you trying to separate flavors? Yeah, three, yes. it's, uh, three, we have three fries for the volume, so I could be okay. able to get more empanadas fried. So um, what I basically do is, in a, if I'm in a big event, I'll use one for chicken, the other one for beef, and okay. that way, and then, of course, you have to put one down so that the empanadas don't float up. Okay. Um, okay. You've already made two. What are they, are these the tacos? This is a chicken and this is beef. Okay. Chicken and Can beef. you fry us up a guava and cheese? Of course. Oh, okay. Because we gotta have dessert. Yeah. I mean, we're about to taste these, but all right. So tell us what you're so doing. So this right is now. the process. So it's the yeah. process. Just you put just it in. Pop it in. Then close it up because if not, the empanada will float in the, in the oil. Have you been burned? I feel like I'm gonna oh, get burned here. I've been burned. You're not, but I have been burned, and it's <laughs> not nice. Things are getting real hot. It's not yeah. nice. And yeah. How is it working in here when you know it's like July in Central Florida? I have to imagine. It's tough. Yeah. This yeah. Uh, this flower. Uh, this summer was very tough. Yeah. 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 Hot. It was about 103 outside, so in here it's about 120. So wow. it's, and then it's not worth to have the AC because the fryers are in so it would just go up so yeah. it's basically a waste to have the ac so it's tough all so right how long do you yeah. cook these for two to three minutes okay two That's to great. three minutes and it'll be done is it different for different flavors nope, or is, nope. same and thing how do you know when it's done um you'll see you'll see you see this okay. one's already starting to get crispy oh yeah, yeah. so your guava, the guava takes a little less than that so maybe about in another minute or so it'll be it'll be ready but that's when you see when you from this color when it gets to this color you know it's ready how do you keep track of which ones have been in there longer uh, just doing it for so long i guess i put it like um let's say if you had a beef chicken and a cheese i'll put the beef chicken in the cheese and then when I'm taking it out, I know what, exactly what to tell you, beef, chicken, and yeah, cheese. Yeah, because they're not okay. written on there. No, no. no. You don't have like we did a, so a many empanadas. chicken written yeah. so many that we do, it would be so much to yeah. go ahead and have to stamp each and every yeah. one of them. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to dig into these. I also wanted to try the taco, though, that you highly okay. recommend. Okay, yes, of course. You know, while we're here. I mean, why not? Yeah, when in the food truck, it's go for it. Yeah. 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 That's the guava. Okay. So we just like, they all look delicious. Just pull and grab? Daniel? I guess. Yes, of course. Okay. You want yeah, me to do, do two tacos? Sure. Oh my God. Oh, oh that's the beef. Great. That is, I didn't say beef. Okay, my God. I just washed my hands. <laughs> 
Now, okay. do you, are, how do you eat this? You just pick it up? Yeah. Pick it up and No then, knife and fork? No way. What about, about a, what about a sauce? Pocket, right? Do you have any sauces? Oh, um, yeah, we have. Do people have a certain oh. sauce? Or is it good? I, I usually oh. tell people not to I have mean, the sauce because no, no the seasoning, sauce. we have so much seasoning in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us about your beef recipe. Okay. I, I am now beef? dancing in front yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what amazing. I tell my customers that the seasoning makes the palate dance. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're called dancing empanada. Um, the beef is just um, seasoned Spanish seasoning. And it's spilling out of here. Yeah, There's so, so much. much. Meat. Yeah. Yes, and that's the thing, that's what we're known for, mm -hmm. that every bite is going to have meat in it. It almost tastes buttery to me. <laughs> really it's so good. good. Oh, how it's glad so you good. like it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm going to leave my bite over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. All right, and then this one's the chicken. Do you want to do, do the open? Mm -hmm. Okay. You okay, ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Pro. You want to hear the crunch? It's like ground chicken. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The meat market grounds it for me. Okay. And what are the seasoning differences between Why the beef and the so chicken? It's the same. Same it's the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only thing that goes a little different is the mm. uh, the taco because we throw a little bit of refried bean in it, and then it has taco seasoning, so we're not putting the, the Puerto, Rican Puerto Rican seasoning in it. You know. When, so when you say Puerto Rican seasoning, for someone who doesn't know, what's like the biggest oomph? Uh, the sofrito. The sofrito, yep. right? Sofrito, adobo, sazon, yeah. um, garlic. The so garlic good. is very important as well. Yeah. You know? so. Oh my gosh, these are so good. good. I know. These are so good. Oh my gosh. And the, there's no nice way of, of eating these. Oh no, smelly. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Dig right in. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have people sometimes ask me for forks or something. I'm like, oh, we don't have no, none no, of that. No. This is finger food. Mm -hmm. So. You must have known, though, you were onto something when you were selling out of oh, your yes. car. Oh, yes. I knew we had something going on special mm -hmm. when um, I seen how much. I, but I was selling about maybe about 60, 70 empanadas for lunch. So where would you where would you find customers? I would just go to, to the barber shops and the mechanic shops because I know that they're busy and don't really have time to go out. Right. So that's where I decided to start, and which is very smart. Too, and then the customers, customers the as well, getting haircuts as well, yes. So it worked out, worked out well. And of course, we love your shirt. Thank you Tell so us much. Where the dancing empanada came from? Because you weren't always known as the dancing empanada. Oh, no, yeah. we was actually known as a kingdom empanada. Okay. Oh, and this, um, that was good. That's this my wife also. decided to give it a little special touch, the, and what, she came up touch? with. That's right. She came up with the dancing empanada, and that's where we stayed. The dancing empanada. So we love it. It's catchy. Um, and it, it, everybody tells us all the time they love our logo and our name. Yeah. So yeah. that that's all goes all the all the props go to my mom, wife on that one. And you were saying earlier when you first started the food truck, you were doing rice and whole like entrees and stuff like that. But there's so much so much food sometimes that's left over. This, I mean, the, the overhead. I mean, you freeze and then yeah. What, what happens to the the empanadas that you don't end up frying? Today, whatever that I don't end up frying, I'll just put in the freezer right back here. Yeah. Pull out for tomorrow's job. That's nice. fantastic. So I bet that saved best. you a lot of money. And, it did, and, it, and it just. Uh, that's like the only advice I have to someone that's trying to start a food truck to minimize their their uh, menu. Yeah, Be as efficient yeah. As possible. because yeah. when when you have too much, it's just a lot mm -hmm. going on. When you concentrate on one thing, yeah. it makes it a whole lot easier. That's right. All right, we have like that that's less the guava than a minute. That's the guava and cheese. I already see the guava. <laughs> that looks amazing. Oh yeah. Oh, and I want to. I'm yeah. afraid oh, that God. this is going to be really hot. Okay. But I want to break into you're this not taco supposed one. to. You're not supposed to like just like break this open, but I am. <laughs> and here's the taco one. This is his favorite. Mm. Ooh, it is hot. Mm. Oh, oh the yeah, guava. This cheesy. See, okay. and then the Before I go beef. to dessert, I'm trying this taco. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to get close to her. On no. this one. <laughs> Let me eat here in peace. <laughs> Delicious. That one's my favorite. Mm -hmm. The seasoning is amazing. Thank you. Yep. How's the guava and cheese? Better than a kind of drug. I need a napkin. I do. <laughs> <laughs> She's Daniel my Mercedes, thank you so much. This was thank fun. The dancing and panada, fantastic. Thank Good you. luck really. with the future in North Carolina as Amen. well. Thank you. If you like this episode of Florida Foodie, check out our other interviews right now on News 6 Plus. 
you can get the story behind dozens of local restaurants and food trucks all for free. Just download the new 6 Plus app on your smart TV. 